and uh, welcome to this week's episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. As per usual, big thank you to everybody that uh, watched last week's episode of the show, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously, I will catch up with the uh, comments uh, probably later on today, so um, bear with me on that one. Also, a big thank you to uh, all the suppliers and distilleries that uh, sent in samples as well. Uh, that was really cool, and uh, so everybody's... Uh, um, yeah. Support is, is, is greatly appreciated, as we said. Um, so, on to today's episode of the show. It, I think in life we can safely say that there are three uh, certainties. Death, taxes, price rises. And the, the, <laughs> obviously not the, the, the first of those, the, the last of those is the, is the essence of today's show. Um, nobody's dying, I hate to add, hasten to add. But uh, price rises are happening. I mean, I got sent... Over the last sort of few weeks, I've been sent sort of uh, several emails. You know, kicks off with the usual mayor culpa business of uh, oh, we've struggled to sort of um, you know uh, absorb our costs uh, increases, but we feel like we're going to have to pass them on to you now. And I'm thinking, well, cheers, mate. You know, um, we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. The economy has been hammered. Everybody's money is stretched, and you're putting your prices up. That's really good of you. Um, <laughs> I mean, I must admit, I'm obviously not going to name names of, of who's putting their prices up, but I think uh, the trouble is, is, of course, that one, when one starts, the others have a tendency to follow, uh, which is a bit of an unfortunate situation, But and I haven't really looked at them too deeply, to be honest with you, but um, anyway, like I said, it's an inevitability. So, um, today's episode of the show is all about value for money. Now, I know this... The, the, the idea of value for money is a bit of a nebulous term, it has to be said, and you know, some it's one that often sparks a lot of disagreement, shall we say, uh, because people, different people, have different ideas of what constitutes good value for money. Now, I'm not saying that sort of you know, um, expensive whiskies are aren't good value for money. I mean, uh, I, I've tasted numerous ones, um, but let's be honest, we don't all have. You know the sort of deep pockets to sort of buy those kind of whiskies every day so what I'm looking at today is a selection of half dozen uh, whiskies that are uh, under 50 quid I mean your average sort of 10 year old is now sort of oh, starting to get up to about 50 quid so I thought 50 quid is a good sort of you know uh, sort of point uh, to, to, to look at sort of price wise and um, well the thing is, with when you are sort of looking at this end of the price spectrum, you're often looking at um, blended whiskey. We're often looking at no age statement whiskey, and you know, again, this kind of throws up an, a whole new load of issues with people uh, being particularly sort of snobby about sort of blends, and particularly sort of like I, I'm not going to drink anything that doesn't have an age statement, you know. And you think, well, you're missing the point there. Um, so, you know, this whole area, this whole sub 50 quid area is kind of like a little bit, a little bit fraught, should we say. But at the end of the day, like I always say, it's all about the juice. And yeah, I really don't care whether it has an age statement or not. I don't really care whether it's a blend, a vatting or, or a single malt. You know, all I'm interested in is, you know, do I feel comfortable selling that particular whiskey at that particular price? That's, that's. It, in a nutshell, it's simple, for, for, as far as I can see anyway, um, because I have no sort of particular hang-ups or anything like that about sort of age or, um, you know, that kind of thing. So, to me, all I'm interested in is how good the, the spirit is and uh, whether that is really good value for money and whether that's, a, a, you know, a 13, 14 20 pound whiskey or 200 pound whiskey or 2000 pound whiskey the, the concept is exactly the same as far as I'm concerned so but like I said we're not looking at ridiculously expensive whiskies today uh, we're looking at like I said uh, all of these are sub 50 quid and you know, I think fall into the the, the term affordable whiskies so uh, let's uh, let's take a look at today's lineup Okay, so we're going to kick off with a blend. Uh, this is the uh, Duncan Taylor Black Bull Blended Scotch Whiskey. 
and it's 12 years old. It carries an age statement, which is quite impressive, and it retails for just under 40 quid, 39.95 in actual fact. Um, so, yeah, that's, it's, I think it's going to be a good one to start off with, and we'll see what that one is all about. Uh, the next bottling we'll be looking at is the first of the no age statement bottlings. This is called Rock Island and is bottled by uh, Douglas Lang. Now, a few years ago, it used to be called Rock Oyster. I don't know why they changed the name of it because I used to like the, the name Rock Oyster. Um, when they first launched it, all I could think of was Rock Lobster, you know, B-52s, you know, anyway. Um, now, this is this is an interesting vatted malt. So it's just, you know it's a vatting of malt whiskies, and they take them from um, Orkney, Arran, Isla, probably called Isla, and Jura. Now, um, I've tasted this bottling numerous times over, over the years, and the quality kind of hangs on how much Jura goes into the blend. If it's a bit too heavy on the Jura, it can be a bit but. Obviously, no preconceptions on this particular bottling. We will uh, give it a taste and see where we're at. Right, so the next bottling we'll be looking at is another no age statement bottling, again from an independent. Uh, oh, incidentally, the uh, Rock Island is, uh, I've seen it as low as 36.45. Um, the next bottling we'll be looking at is the Angel's Nectar. This is the Single Malt Isla edition. So I think we can probably guess it's going to probably be Kill Isla. Um, it's unlikely to be Ardbeg and, well, I, mean, I don't know, not, I mean, it's it's peated, so, you know, anyway, uh, it's a bottle of 47%, this is uh, a five-year-old, although obviously it doesn't state that on the label, but I know it's a five-year-old spirit, and it's been matured in ex-Bourbon casks, and um, it's, well, we have it on, on the shelf for 40, £47.40, so um, I think, I think that kind of gives the game away a little bit that I've got it in stock. Anyway, um, the next bottle we'll be looking at is another peated one, um, and we're going peated right to the very end, which is going to be good fun. Um, this is the Black Bull Blended Scotch Whiskey Peated Edition. That's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, it's bottled at 50% uh, like the 12-year-old, which I forgot to mention earlier on, and it it's going to cost you the pricely figure of $34.95. So, don't know how old it is. Um, don't know where the components come from. They obviously, obviously Duncan Taylor don't, uh, don't divulge that information, but we shall give it a taste and see what we think. And the final two bottlings are, are pretty much brand new. In actual fact, the sample labels were, these were pre-release pre uh, samples, so didn't even have the details of the actual uh, name of the whiskey on apart from it's it's no age statement um so this is um morrison distillers now I've, probably some of you know probably some of you don't know um that uh, the morrison family and the Mackay family have gone their separate directions um a bit like the Lang brothers did a few years ago so uh now it's i believe i think morrison the Morrison side of the family bought out the, the, the Mackays, I, I believe, anyway. So now it's completely Morrison Distillers Limited as opposed to Morrison and Mackay. And when these things have a tendency to happen, of course, um, they tend to do a bit of house cleaning, sort of new ranges, you know, some things get shuffled off. Um, and it seems to me that the, um, the regional range that they were doing uh, has, has kind of gone and... Um, Maybe that they'll bring them back. I honestly don't know, but they've started off by bringing out two bottlings, which they've called uh, Mactala, uh, and these are um, no age statement uh, Isla whiskies. Uh, and um, the first one we'll be looking at is called Terra. It's bottled at forty six percent, and uh, I've seen it uh, online for about forty two quid. So. We'll see what that one's like. And the cask strength bottling, which is a bottle of 58.2%, uh, is called Mara. And uh, this I've seen online for 44 95 So again, uh, I believe a uh, single malt. And I would imagine, again, Kulila, as that seems to be the distillery that uh, uh, is most readily available. But, like I said, we shall give them a taste and we shall see what uh, see if they're, they're worth, uh, worth the price tag. Right, okay, so let's kick off with the Black Bull blend. Let's see what those gives on this end, shall we? 
that's a nice nose. That is, it's fragrant, aromatic, um, barley, getting a nippiness from the grain, um, heather, minerals, a little bit of dried fruit. So I'm guessing this is predominantly highland. Um, it's got that sort of scrubby kind of um, highland character. There's a little bit of sherry there in the background comes through with a touch of tar uh, and, and a little bit of raisin this obviously obviously the, the the grain is giving it a little bit of nip it has a nice weight to it it's got some maturity um, 40 quid well I, I think that's lovely um, I think that's an absolutely gorgeous nose and um, although I don't stock it at this present moment in time I have stocked black bull over the years uh, back you know, when we were uh, doing uh, more business with Duncan Taylor um, and I've always thought that they've done a really good job with, with this particular uh, brand. So anyway, let's, let's see what the plant's like. A little bit more earthy sherry to kick off with. And slightly herbal. It's nutty, it's full, plenty of dried fruit. Again, it has that sort of highland, heathery kind of character, a little bit of honey, more dried fruit, nice length, touch of spice, good weight of malt. There's a seriously good chunk of malt here, um, and it's really nicely balanced. You get the, the palate kind of kicks off with the malt, and the grain just starts to poke its head through towards the end of them, and it's a a little bit of a nip, there's a little bit of a grainy sweetness as well. Um, I think for 40 quid that's really nicely balanced. It's pleasant, it's enjoyable, it has complexity, it has length, you know. Um, sounds good to me. Right, okay, so let's move on to a bit of rock lobster then. Oh, sorry, rock island. Oh, um, let's see what the nose gives us. I'm picking up a fair chunk of Jura, it has to be said. Um, it's oily, it's lanolin, it's a little rough, shall we say. Um, the Kulila is kind of adding, obviously, a little bit of astringency, some saltiness, some white fruit. Um, there's some briny peat. A little bit of lemon as well. Um, white flowers. Uh, so I'm kind of getting sort of predominantly Kalila now, the sort of like the Jura has kind of gone, right, okay, uh, and the Kalila's coming through and I'm getting a, there's a little bit of, a little bit of Aran fruitiness, there's a little bit of, 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 of Highland Park there, um, but the main focus initially is Jura and then Kalila, um, which I, I'm guessing are the, the cheaper of the four components shall we say um so they're going to obviously feature more it's like i said i think um you have to if you like jura uh, and i find it as you well know a little bit hard going um it's 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 a it's a pleasant vein and like i said you know you you've, you've got to to like <laughs> like a good chunk of jura if you're gonna gonna purchase it but you know it's, it's got some complexity, can't argue with that. Let's see what parts are. Good length off with a little bit more of the Aaron character. I'm getting a little more fruitiness. Um, yes, the Jura is adding an edge, a little roughness there, shall we say. Um, there's some phenolic peat. It's not heavily peated. It's got a good weight to a peat to it. Um, it's got that crisp, salty sort of white fruit notes. Um, it's a little hot, a little, little bitter on the, on the finish maybe. But it's not something I'm going to go and get bent out of shape about, it has to be said. Um, I think I prefer the palette. I think, obviously, because of <laughs> less noticeable Jura there, shall we say. Um, and it's got a nice kind of coastal, 
almost kind of, yeah, wouldn't quite go as far as saying fishy, maybe sort of oystery sort of, you know, shellfish possibly. Um, and like I said, I, I think by and large the, the this particular bottling quality has been has been pretty good. And like I said, it's all as far as I'm concerned, it, it's how much Jura gets used in the vatting that determines whether I particularly like it or not. Um, but I think if you like that kind of sort of coastal um, kind of whiskey and you're on a bit of a budget, then you know I don't think this is a particularly bad one at all. So yeah. It's good. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Angel's Nectar. Now, I, I must admit, I do like the Angel's Nectar range, although I wasn't really particularly fussed on the Cairngorms bottling that uh, uh, that came out sort of late November, I think it was. Um, but I've always liked the Angel's Nectar, the original, and um, the, the Rich Pea, and uh, we'll, we'll see what this one's like. Yep, yeah, it's it's kind of it's Kalila. Um, it's lightly medicinal, quite fresh, sort of almost old school Kalila, but it's got the weight. It's got a little bit of honey, white fruit, iodine, smoke, touch of menthol. You know, it's it's got some lovely complexity, and as we well know, Kalila is you know you can get away with bottling Kalila really young. Um, and as you know, it's because it's. I've never come across a sort of like a an overtly fainty Kulila um, at sort of like a young age. Even though that they obviously the distillery has a tendency to use a lot of uh, of refill casks. Um, I'm guessing that uh, you know the, the the although the sort of character of the spirit has changed over the years. It's uh, it's it's coming off at sort of like you know that kind of less impure kind of nature to allow it to sort of be bottled early and um you know so it's 47 pounds 40 it's yeah it's lovely it's a pleasant nose i mean it's you know it is what it is so let's see what the parts like Rounded, polished, full, quite barley to kick off with. A um, little bit of salt, a little bit of iodine, a little bit of peat, um, some white fruits, slight astringency, a little bit of coastal note. The barley kind of sets itself out quite nicely with an almost kind of honeyed coating to it and just kind of continues throughout and um, allows the sort of like the, the peat and the salt and the, and the, the, the crisp white fruit to kind of like sort of uh, you know, move around it, shall we say? And um, yeah, I like that. I think that's that's really nice. I, I like the bottle as well. I think the bottle is great. I like the, uh, the 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 logo, the branding. Although, as we well know, that's you know secondary, really. But yeah, you know, I kind of it looks cool, um, and it tastes nice. So I mean, well, you know, I suppose what more can you ask for? So um, yeah, another another really nice whiskey. Right, okay, so let's move on to the uh, the Black Bull Blended uh, Peated Edition. Let's see what those goes on this end, shall we? It's a bit fuller in actual fact, um, although it's a blend, um, I'm getting plenty of malt. Uh, it's, it's meaty, savoury, a good dollop of peat. Um, I'm guessing that we've got probably a mixture of of Isla and uh, Highland um, peated malts in uh, here because um, there's a little bit of medicinalness. I mean, it could even be a bit of um, uh, a bit of lecture, you know, that that would uh, seem to probably give me the um, <laughs> give me the heebie-jeebies. No, <laughs> give me the slight savoury kind of uh, meatiness. Um, there's a touch of tar. There's a little bit of burnt heather. Um, you can only just about pick out the grain. There is a lot of malt in this, or shall we say, from the nose perspective, it seems like there's a lot of malt. Um, I mean, I, I can't remember what, what historically what the black ball blend was. 
I had a feeling it was 50-50 um, from memory, but I could well be wrong. But uh, certainly, like I said, just from putting your nose in the grass, there is a, a good malt character here, and uh, um, that the grain is noticeable, but you know, not not overly intrusive. And um, what 35 quid, you know. Um, so that's right. Initially the palette is fresher, it's crisper, it's cleaner, um, there's a little bit more sort of salty white fruits, that kind of thing. Um, it feels like a little bit more noticeable grain, it's got that sort of kind of sweet grain kind of character on the mid palette, a little bit of grainy dried fruit, um, some soot, some peat, um, again a little bit of herbalness, um, it's got a good length. The grain kind of lingers. I think um, the, the grain kind of kicks in fairly early on, it has to be said. But I think there's enough other things happening to sort of like um, uh, not make it feel like it's too kind of austere and just, just a sort of a young grain spirit at the finish. Um, it lingers really nicely. The peat and the sort of the, the smoke kind of uh, helps that. Um, yeah, I like it. I mean, 35 quid, you know, I mean, you could do a lot worse, I can say, I can tell you, because uh, that is, I think, really nice. Okay, so moving on to the first of the two uh, Morrison Distillers bottlings. This is the Terror. Let's see what the nose gives us on this. Is it going to terrorise me? Oh, I know, that was dreadful. Um, oh, that's young. That's young. It's intense. It's phenolic. It's it's stepping the line, shall we say, between um, fainty and actually. I mean, I like it. It's it's it feels natural. It's got like I said. It's 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 walking this line between sort of polished and raw, and um, it's gristy. It's barleyed. It's Young white fruit. It's it's bloody nappy. So it has to be said. This you know this is this is Colila sort of you know not very old whatsoever. Um, I I would guess we're probably if this is this is probably about three, maybe four. Um, and you know I like it. It's I wouldn't say it's got flaws because um, that that would be disingenuous. Um, it's it's got character. <laughs> um, it's it's got a bit of rawness to it. It's got a bit of intensity. Um, you know, um, forty-two quid. Well, okay, yeah. Um, I think personally, if I could have, I mean, I, I don't know what the cost price is, so I don't know what uh, whoever I, I found this price off, uh, what their their margins are. But you know, I think. I would probably feel more comfortable if this was hitting maybe thirty nine ninety five. If I could engineer it to that kind of point, um, I think forty two is just a little too much, uh, in my opinion. Um, but it's fun. It's 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 good fun. It's intense. Um, let's see what that's like. Palette is fuller, it's oilier, it's more modern Kalila. There's a touch of pear, white apple, um, grape, a little bit of, of, of seaweed, iodine, stringent peat. Not a huge peat monster, but it's got a lovely peatiness, it's got a lingering sootiness. Um, a little bit of salt, a little bit of heather. I mean, that's got. got and it's got a, a good degree of complexity going on, it has to be said. It doesn't feel quite as raw 
on the palette. The palette is a little bit more evolved than the, the nose. I still think that if I could, you know, sell that at thirty nine ninety five, I'd probably feel happier than selling it at 42 quid. But like I said, um, the website that I found the price on, I don't know obviously what their pricing policy is like. And But to me, you know, if I, like I said, I think if that was at thirty nine ninety five, I'd be sort of like, yeah. Right, okay, so let's move on to the uh, the, the Mara. So this is car strength at 58.2%. Let's see what those gives us on this end, shall we? It's a little oilier than the 46% bottling, but it's still pretty raw, pretty intense, uh, pretty young. Um, as a sort of a straw-like kind of note now um, on the nose, but again, there's some white fruit, a little bit of honey, a little bit of barley, um, possibly a little, little bit more sweeter barley, a little bit less peat. Um, but that's probably more down to the um, the fact that it's car strength. Um, mind you, in saying that, I'm getting a little bit more kind of manuriness, shall we say? Um, yeah, I mean, again, like the forty-six percent bottling, it's got character, it's got youth, it's got. Um, it's, it's interesting, uh, it's young, it's fresh, it's manure-y, hmm, it sort of sounds <laughs> like, young, peaty, very sooty, um, Barley, salt, noticeable alcohol, certainly you can tell that's car strength. Um, it doesn't totally mask the finish. Um, I mean, the finish is quite juicy, it's quite mouth-watering. Um, again, salt, peat, a little bit of heather, a little bit of honey, balanced. Again, a little rawness, uh, youthful, uh, intense. Like I say, you can't argue that it doesn't actually have any character. It certainly has plenty of character. Um, and again, it's kind of um, quite interesting to uh, to see another <laughs> another Kalila, shall we say? Uh, let's uh, see what a little drop of water does to the uh, the nose. More aromatic, more herbal, in actual fact. Um, not quite the same as the. Now that's got a little bit more mentally. Um, yeah, it's just definitely. Um, more herbal, more and still quite intense in actual fact, um, and uh, there's a little bit of almost kind of sort of powdered cocoa, um, mm, sort of powdered cocoa manure peat. Mm. Let's see what that's like. A little bit less peat now, a um, little bit more emphasis on, on the barley, on the, on the honey. It's rounder, it's fuller, um, again slightly herbal, a little bit of pepper as well, just coming through right on the finish. Again, yeah, I think that's really quite pleasant. Personally, I'd, I'd drink it neat, you know, to get the, you know, get the, the, the whole kind of um, experience, shall we say, and what, 40, well, 45 quid, yeah, I, I don't think that's, that's too shabby at all, to be honest with you, um, yeah, nice. Right, okay, so, um, let's sum today's episode of the show up. Well, I think it kind of proves that there are some interesting whiskies at under 50 quid, I mean, yes, there's obviously a whole load more, but this is what I've physically managed to uh, scrape together and, uh, and have in front of me. And, um, you know, like I said, there's going to be blends, there's going to be no age statement bottlings, but to me, not got a problem with it. Um, the, the Black Bull blend, I think, was absolutely gorgeous. A lovely whiskey, you know, um, 40 quid. You know, you, you, you're going to struggle to get, um, you know, something of that level of complexity and, and quality at uh, uh, 40 quid to be frankly honest with you um, and it doesn't matter if it's a blend of course it doesn't matter if it's a blend it's just what it tastes like and it tastes really good um, the um, 
Rock Island, Island, Rock Island, Island. Oh dear God, what's happening to me? Um, the Rock Island. Um, yeah, it's pleasant. I mean, you know, it's like I said. If you like your Jura, if you like the slightly rough and ready Jura, you're slightly oily. I don't know. I keep going. Yeah, you know, it's 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 a pleasant vatting at the end of the day. Um, it's good value for money. And again, if you like the sort of like the the island style, should we say? Then certainly, it's not not a bad one to go for. Um, the Angel's Nectar. Uh, yeah, again. You know, it's it, it it's good. It's five year old Kalila at the end of the day. It uh, um, <laughs> does what it says on the tin, sort of to a certain extent. Uh, and uh, you know, bottled at a good ABV. You know, obviously non chill filtered. Certainly, obviously no colouring involved whatsoever. Uh, and just has a sort of like a nice and uh, an all round really nice character. Um, and you can pretty much say the same for the the the, the Black Bull. Um, Petered edition, you know, it's like it's 35 quid for goodness sake, you know, um, and there's a lot going on there for 35 quid. Yeah, all right, on the palette, yep, it possibly shows a little bit more grain character, um, and, but that's what you expect, I suppose, you know, you know, the, the malt component is going to be the most expensive, so when you're looking to hit price points, you're sort of saying, right, well, you know, we obviously have to be judicious with the amount of, uh, of malt to, to grain. Um, but that the nose would seem to imply that there's an awful lot of of, uh, of malt involved in in this particular blend. The palate kind of like gives the Game Boy a little bit, shall we say? But you know, it's not unpleasant and it's not overly grainy. It's kind of just really nice and balanced, I think, at the end of the day. And like I said, thirty-five quid. You know, um, the the Morrison Distillers um, Terra. Um, yeah, I, yeah, you gotta love it. It's 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 young. It's intense. It's kind of like whoa, you know. I'm gonna give you the full on kind of Kalila Isla experience, and uh, um, yeah, like I said, I think th this these kind of bottlings are very very price sensitive at the end of the day, and I think certainly. Uh, I wouldn't feel happy at selling that for 42 quid, but if I could sell that for 39.95, and yeah, all right, you can argue, well, that's only a, you know, a couple of quid, for God's sake. What's, but, you know, when you're talking about down here, I wouldn't, I was going to say bargain basement, but it's not really, is it? Um, but when we're talking about malts down at this price point, price is very, very sensitive. I mean, you know, you're 21 year old, you're 35 year old, that kind of thing, you know, you can whack another five pound on the, on the retail price of that. And, you know, if it retails for 105 or 110, nobody really cares. It doesn't make much difference. But down here, you know, a couple of quid makes a big, big difference uh, as far as I'm concerned. And like I said, you know, at 39.95, no problem at all with that. 42, little bit too much. Um, and the last bottling, the uh, the, the Mara, the car strength bottle. Again, it's young Corlila. It does what it says on the tin. It's intense. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm okay with that at about 45 quid. No problem. It's it's car strength for, for to start off with. Uh, is more alcohol, more duty. You know, you can you can you can kind of almost well sell it on that point you know you well, because of this kind of, like I say this this price point you are having to kind of justify to the customer why you know it's good at that kind of point price point and they'll sort of look at that and go well it's no age statement you know and you go ah, it's car strength and they go mm. you know and it's all this kind of should we say a bit of a game um but you know um like I said I think that, that today's tasting sort of amply uh, shows the, that there is a lot of interesting stuff at under 50 quid and this is you know this could be your go-to your everyday kind of whiskey you know if you drink every day that is um not that i'm judging at all um but you know so you know we're not all gonna be well you know got the got the, the deep pockets to be supping on sort of 21 year olds every afternoon are we but um so you know if you are looking for something that's sort of like you know sub 50 quid then this little selection i think is uh you know more than fits the bill so so yeah there you go that's this week's episode of the show in the bag oh, i was going to call it cheap and cheerful but it's not quite cheap and cheerful is it i mean it's cheerful um and but yeah I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll shut up now and um, I'll just say good afternoon and good running.
Ich